some area that you can go and see. Where can you take your gal tonight, Andy? I hear you chunder. On Monday, ladies and gentlemen, on Monday up at Theatre Cluid, uh, we are going to be Tret. Tret we will be to uh, the new Bill Kenwright production. Uh, Bill Kenwright presents, uh, in conjunction with the uh, classic thriller theatre company, uh, an Alfred Hitchcock classic. It's called The Lady Vanishes. Now, fans of Alfred Hitchcock will be well aware of The Lady Vanishes. It's a great movie. However, are you aware of the play? Are you, though? It is uh, called A Quick-Witted and Devilishly Fun Thriller. Hitchcock's classic film is brought to life in this new adaptation. Now... Uh, Iris is uh, travelling home by train when her travelling companion suddenly disappears. As Iris turns detective, uh, she is drawn into a complex web of intrigue and mystery. It's a wee belter, that's all I'm saying to you, it's a cracker. It has an all-star cast, including Emmy Award winner Juliette Mills, uh, Dynasty star Maxwell Caulfield, uh, Downton Abbey's Matt Barber, as well as this young lady, EastEnders' Lorna Fitzgerald. Now then, on uh, Thursday of this week, I, uh, I caught up with Lorna, and, uh, and we had a really good chat about all things The Lady Vanishes and her time in EastEnders. Uh, here she comes then, here's Lorna Fitzgerald, uh, live on the stage and screen show, Cal on FM. Hi, Andy, you all right? I'm very well. Are you all right for a quick chat? Oh, yeah, that's fine. Marvellous. So, uh, you're in Bath at the minute. What, in true British style, what's the, what's the weather like? <laughs> oh, gosh, don't. I am... Um... I haven't taken this call in the car to actually have some heating on. It's so <laughs> cold at the minute. It's a joke. It's mad, isn't it? It's Yeah, is it snowing in Wales? It is, actually. Well, we had snow yesterday. Um, we promised a little oh, bit. Really? Promised a bit more, but uh, it's, I mean, it's just gone from kind of mild to ridiculously cold. Yeah, like overnight. Yeah. I've been told to bring wellies. Bring your wellies. Yes. Yes. <laughs> 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 yeah, well, I was just looking at your dates there. You just played South End last week, didn't you? Yeah, which, but as you said, because it sort of happened overnight, it wasn't too cold. Like, it was cold, but it wasn't yeah. freezing or anything. Yeah. But it's really changed this week. Yeah, crackers, mad. So how how is life on the road? Is it is it a good place to be? Yeah, I mean, it, it takes some getting used to. Yeah. Um, like, changing constantly, but I'm really looking forward to seeing parts of the world that, I didn't know about or wouldn't have necessarily gone to before. Have you played Theatre Cluid before? No. No, no, I've, I've no, I've never played it before. So I'm really looking forward to it. It's a, it's a lovely it's a lovely part of the world. It's a, I mean it, it it's great because quite a few touring companies are coming to Theatre Cluid now. I heard it's quite a modern theatre. It looks really modern. And yeah, split. it is very modern, but um, it's yeah. strangely sort of. I think it opened in '77, but it is. Compared to a lot of theatres in the country, it's quite a modern place. Yeah, in the cast. Yeah. I've played there. Right, yeah. And this, I mean, this play, The um, the Lady Vanishes, it's a, it, it, it's a cult classic, isn't it? It's, uh, I mean, Alfred Hitchcock fans all know it, know it well, but uh, for those of you, yeah. those of us who don't know it, what, what, what's, give, give us a quick synopsis. Yeah, yeah, so for those who don't know it or haven't seen the film, it's about passengers on a train who get kicked train because there's an avalanche and then there's a lady called Miss Boy who goes missing and Iris has seen her but every other passenger denies having seen her yeah and um yeah it's just about finding Miss Boy really and then she wrote a guy called Maxim and it just unravels from there but it's a proper mystery and you really don't have any idea what's going on yeah it is it's it, it, I, and I watched it last night actually I it was on it must have been on tv oh. Not long ago, because um, I was able to download it on on Sky. I mean, it's it's it is funny, isn't it? Because it's kind of, it, it describes itself as a sort of quick-witted, devilishly funny thriller, which 
I mean, that sounds like a bit of a contradiction in terms, but how, how does it kind of manifest itself? Is it? It's not a comedy, is it, as such? No, it, it's not a comedy, but it is very funny. Yeah. Um, there's these, because there's all these stories going on with it. Like, I'm not necessarily a funny character, but there's two cricketers that their comic timing is amazing, and then you've got an affair going on on this train carriage. And so you don't quite know why everyone's denying it, but I think it's a good contrast that you have this mystery, that you can laugh all the way through it as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you're playing the the uh, it, uh, is the lead role, I presume, of Iris, and uh, and it's yeah, you're heading a, a stellar cast. It's like a it's like a who's who of British theatre and film, isn't it? Yeah, which is just great, and they're so lovely, and they're really experienced at it. So. For me, who's not very experienced with the stage and that, it was definitely a great learning curve just watching people who are so at ease with it and really good. Yeah, and that's the nice thing when, it's, when, you've, when you work with people who have been in the business for years and you can just learn off them by watching them, isn't it? You don't have to go to any classes or anything. You're, you're almost getting a master class every night, almost. <laughs> that's it, though. That's so it. Like, and that's how I learned to watch them. And I think, oh, I'll take that. Oh, I like what they did there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And the classic theatre, the classic thriller theatre company is going from strength to strength. It's in its 10th year now, amazingly. And it's, uh, it's, be it's becoming more and more popular, isn't it? What, what do you think the appeal is of the, the screen-to-stage genre? I, I just think they're classics, as you said. They've got a real cult following and this has stayed very close to the movie so I think they're just classics and they transform really well to stage yes they do so some some things really do and I know um it's uh, Bill Kenwright's uh, taking it on the tour isn't he um yeah. and he's got Rain Man as well on tour which I, I can't even imagine how that would work <laughs> no but I mean it, it must do because he does the tour really well yeah so um yeah and I think he also has a musical at the minute which is just this great he can have so many going yeah oh yeah well I I did uh, I did Blood Brothers for Bill Kenwright really yeah and oh I love Blood Brothers it's a cracking show isn't it it was funny because I I was a big sort of I was a big fan of it I saw it when I was a student and um, and then I ended up in it, and it was like, <laughs> it was like I'd won a competition. It was just the most bizarre thing. To... Yeah, did you enjoy it? Oh, I loved it. It was my dream job, you know. Yeah. Yeah. We went, Who did we... you play? I played Mickey, the uh, the Scally. Yeah, brother. yeah. 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 Oh, amazing. Yeah. And funnily, I mean, I was gonna have a, have a quick chat with you about uh, with uh, EastEnders, but my um, when I was training, I trained at Guildhall. And uh, Anne Mitchell, who was your grandma in EastEnders? Yeah, she was my nan in it, Cora. Yeah, yeah, she she was one of my teachers at college. No, she's great. Isn't she? Like, as you said, for, like, learning off of people and, like, taking what they do, she's such a great lady and a great teacher, I can imagine. Oh, yeah. As well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, me. wonderful. She was one of my favourite, not just one of my favourite teachers, but one of my favourite... My favourite people, I think. She's, uh, yeah. I mean, she's like uh, a, a, a wonderful person, sort of inside and out, isn't she? She's lovely. That, yeah. And that's it, and then so talented. Yes, it? I know. <laughs> Makes yeah. you sick. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did you tour with Blood Brothers then? I toured with it in, uh, I toured with it first for a year, then I went into, uh, into the West End with it, yeah. Oh, gosh, how long ago did you do it? I might have seen you as it. It. Uh, 98 to 2000. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. No, I don't think it was then. I think I must have seen another one. Yeah. yeah. Great. So good. Yeah, you'd have only been about two or three then, wouldn't you? <laughs> if that. <laughs> yeah. Bit, bit young. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I mean, you're, you're what, are you 22 now? Yeah, 22. Right. And you've, like, already racked up a, a CV that most actors would kill for. So, a, apart from the many TV and theatre roles you've had, you've, you're obviously most famous for playing Abby Branning in, uh, in EastEnders. So, you took the role in 2006 when you were 10. Had you, yeah. had you trained before then, or, or in any description? No, no. I've been acting since I was four. Right. But I didn't train, because obviously, well, I'm not sure if you can train at that age, or I don't know. No. I went to, like, a Sunday thing. Yeah. Like, where they do, like, um, like a stagecoach, crystal art. Um, but, yeah, I just went for an audition and I got EastEnders. And I was lucky enough to have been there 12 years. 
That's amazing. Yeah, I mean, you don't expect that when, I don't know what I expected at 10, I just thought, oh, I get to miss school. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. But I mean, so, now, you're the, you're the, I read somewhere, you're the seventh longest serving actress in the soap. No way. Yeah, I, 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 I saw it on, I think it was on Wikipedia, I think. I should have written down who, who, who the other seven are, because, or the other six. Yeah. But um, but nine hundred and seventeen episodes—that's ludicrous. Yeah, yeah. Did you did you did your mum and dad record them all? <laughs> oh my god, my mum actually did start in the beginning. I bet. And then, and then I think the skybox was like completely full. <laughs> As I got a bit older, it was less cute. So. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Got about fourteen. I can imagine. It'd be the sort of thing my dad would do. He would just he'd record everything, but it'd get to a point where it'd get a bit ludicrous, wouldn't it? Was you a bit gutted you didn't reach a thousand? Yeah, a little bit, I suppose. I, di- I didn't know the number, but I was just thinking then. I was like, oh, it would have been nice to have made a thousand. Yeah, and you were—I mean, uh, extraordinary in it, actually. I, for, I mean, even when you were ten, you were absolutely fantastic in it. The, Thank you. Was you? I mean, you you must have been a bit surprised, were you, to be written out of that? Um, well, it was just the way the story went. So I, I knew it was coming. And um, I had been there 12 years, and I had never... D- I know I'd been acting since I was four, as I said, but I don't remember it. No. So And I had never done anything else. I'd only ever known TV and that specific type of TV. So I just thought it would be a good time to go. And now I've experienced... Well, I'm on my first tour. Yeah. And I've done three plays, which is just amazing. And I'm very lucky, so... Was it easy? Was it an easy transition to make from television to stage? Oh, um, it was so different. I think even the process of it. I think like the rehearsal process is the biggest change. Yeah. Because if you're used to doing something for twelve years, and then all of a sudden it was just completely different. But everyone was so helpful in the Shadow Factory. Yeah. I think I couldn't have got nicer people and a nicer production to start off with. Yeah. And I, I had um, Sean Williamson on uh, on the show just before Christmas. Barry, yeah. of course, anybody doesn't know him. Um, I think everybody knows Sean. Um, yeah. and, and you said he was kind of uh, secretly quite pleased that he was killed off because it gave him a... He, he knew where he was going then. He knew that he would never go back. I, would, you, would you have preferred to have to, to, like left on a bus or would, were, you, were you happy to be killed off? No, I, I totally agree with him. I think at least then you know and it was a great 12 years that you know you can just go out do other things and that chapter's sort of closed. Yeah. And I think if you are going to go, I mean, you may as well fall off a roof at Christmas. <laughs> yeah. Like, you may as well go big, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And and you were nominated for countless awards, but in 2012 you won the Best Young Performance at the British Soap Awards. Yeah. That must have been amazing. At, at your at your age at the time, what was you, like 16 or something? Yeah, yeah, because I, I think it was the last year I could be nominated for it, so I think I, yeah, just turned 16. And I heard yeah. you say that you, you didn't take your mum because you didn't think you were going to win. No. I, I never think I'm going to win with things like that. So, and then, like, say if I do, like, I can't really remember that at all because I was so nervous. <laughs> the only thought that goes through my head is just get off the stage, get yeah. off the stage. I know. You must think to yourself all the things that you could say and then after it think, I should have said that, I should have said that. Yeah, yeah, and guaranteed you miss loads of people and... Uh-huh. You should have thanked loads of people, but you just forget. Yeah, you're probably better not to thank anybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that, that, that would be a new tactic, wouldn't it? Just walk on, yeah. let it walk off. Yeah, cheers, bye. <laughs> <laughs> One more thing before you go, because uh, Dancing on Ice is on at the minute, and, and I'm always intrigued, because yeah. uh, I know... Um, uh, what, what's the actor called that played your dad, Max? Max Branning? Jake Wood. Yeah, now he was awesome on Strictly, wasn't he? Oh, wasn't he? Would you ever fancy doing anything like that? Adam? Would you fancy doing anything like that? Oh, I'd love to. I would love to be on Strictly. I love the costumes, I love the dances. I even love the judges. I think they're just really nice and productive with comments and the dances are just fabulous. Yeah. I mean, I'd never really watched it properly. Uh, my daughter loves it, so kind of indirectly I had to watch it. And yeah. uh, I was so impressed. I mean, unbelievable some of the dances. 
Oh my gosh, like some of the choreography, like I loved um, this year, um, I really loved Stacey. Yeah. I thought she was great and I just loved Faye's dance, you know, the one where they were like secret agents and they yes. were both in the suit. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's just so cool and you just think that's amazing to have developed such a skill in however long it's on for, it's only weeks, isn't it? Yeah, but I mean, just saying about the uh, the dancing on ice, I, yeah. I don't think I'd be able to do that if, if they gave me... Th- Eight, ten years to practice. I there's no way. Everybody knocks Gemma Collins, but I couldn't do it. <laughs> oh, God. and fair play to her. As you said, like I can't even do it just going around on the surface. <laughs> <laughs> it's Christmas time. Yeah. Alone being able to be lifted on it and yeah, that would even be... lift your leg up, I couldn't do. <laughs> no way. <laughs> And they go, oh, it's the head banger this week, and you're like, I don't think so. I don't think so. And you see those dancers, how have they put their trust in someone they've only known a matter of weeks? I know. The head banger move. Yeah. It just reminds me of Blades of Glory. Yes. I'll be the terrible one. God, brilliant. Brilliant. Hey, it's been a treat speaking to you. Thanks ever so much for that. Oh, yeah, and you. Thank you. And uh, we look forward to seeing you. You're in Theatre Clued on Monday. Yeah, yeah, I can't wait. Yeah, don't forget your wellies. Yeah, no, I'll go to an outdoor shop today and get a proper coat as well. Yeah, proper coat, nice pair, of, nice scarf, pair of gloves, and wellies. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. Lorna, you take care of yourself. Thank you. Cheers, mate. Take care. See you later. Bye. Bye. So there you go, there is Lorna Fitzgerald who is going to be starring in The Lady Vanishes coming to Theatre Cluid on Monday the 4th of February. And that's just for one week only, so uh, that runs until next Saturday uh, the 9th of February. And incidentally, as uh, as we were just discussing in that uh, in that interview there, uh, Paul Nichols and uh, Chris Fountain will be coming up to Theatre Cluid on uh, February the 25th. And that's just for one week only as well. Well, and that is with uh, the classic Rain Man. Rain Man is going to be coming to the stage in Mould. If you're trying to want to get trying to get tickets uh, to go and see anything up at Theatre Cluid, the box office number 01352 701 521. That's 01352 701 521. Go ahead, support your local theatres, girls and boys. They won't be there forever if you don't. <laughs>